going back to here, this means pressure. And the units of pressure are going to be, um, I'll put that over here. The units of pressure can be atmospheres. It can be millimeters of mercury. Or the units of pressure can be kilopascals. All three of those are pressure units. Just like with grams and kilograms and milligrams and centigrams, those are all mass units. We could also use pounds, but we don't because we use metric. But when it comes to pressures, we don't just use atmospheres and kiloatmospheres and milliatmospheres. We don't. We just use atmospheres. If we don't have atmospheres, then we have two other choices. We have millimeters of mercury, which you've probably seen in a barometer before for measuring air pressure. And there's another unit that we use universally all over the world to measure pressure, and that is something called a kilopascal. So P is going to stand for pressure, and it can have three different units. It can't have all three units at the same time. It just has one or the other. for Andrew? Ah. Temperature. Thank you, Andrew. Volume. Temperature. Now, temperature, what are the units for temperature? Uh, Celsius. Celsius or Kelvin. We're not going to do Fahrenheit. And calories or joules are for heat. And heat is different than temperature. I know you think they're the same, but heat is an energy value, and temperature is how hot or how cold something is. So, temperature is measured in Celsius or Kelvin, and for us, it's going to be very important that we always convert to Kelvin when we do this. So, temperature. And, Andrew, what is V? You don't think you know? It might be volume. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm trying to help you see that there are three different symbols we're going to use, P for pressure, T for temperature, and B for volume, and they're all going to be capital. Capital P for pressure, capital T for temperature, capital V for volume, okay? Pressure units, the temperature units are either Celsius or Kelvin, but we will always have to convert and put into what? Kelvin. We will always have to convert it to put into Kelvin. What would be some volume units we might see? Uh, Liters. Liters. Yeah. Oh, look at you. Centimeters cube. <laughs> Woo. She's hot today. All right, what else? Grams. That's mass. What's the same thing as a centimeter cube to CC? A cc. <laughs> at the doctor, what's a cc? A milliliter. Oh, look at Laura and Lauren over there. Milliliter. Milliliter. Centimeters cubed, Hunter. At the doctor, they will call that a cc. Centimeter cubed, a cc. <laughs> and a cc is the same thing as a milliliter. But at the hospital, they don't call them milliliters. They call them cc's which is cubic centimeter. All right, good. All right, so let's go back up here, and we've got two things to fill in, and then, and then Hunter, from there, I'll let you go, but not until you fill this in. All right, P1, V1 over T1. I don't know, you're going. P2, V2 over T2. Pressure with the first set of conditions. Volume, with the first set of conditions, multiplied together, divided by temperature, first set of conditions, will equal pressure at your second set of conditions, volume at your second set of conditions, and temperature at your second set of conditions. Now, that looks a little scary, doesn't it? 
Why? Because it's got six variables. So some of my students in the past have said they would prefer to learn this thing called P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. They would rather learn it as P1V1 T2 equals P2V2 T1. Now that just messes me all up. That just messes with my head, and I don't like that, but you might like it. And all I've done to the combined gas law here is I've done a crisscross multiply to turn it into this. So the combined gas law, you can either memorize it as that, or you can memorize it as this, but you must memorize it. And we're going to do a problem together. And Hunter's going to leave us. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. All right. Look, everybody look with me at example number one. Oh, my desk. You're leaving. Goodbye. That's what they said. <laughs> That's what they said. No, they didn't call to tell me that you're leaving. means the first set of conditions versus the second set of conditions. That's all that means. Now, one more thing I need to point out. Your Celsius temperatures must be converted to Kelvin. How do we do that? Well, I've told you right here. I've said to make something Kelvin, so put a big old fat box around it, stars around it, something, like 10 stars. <laughs> All those stars. Celsius plus 273 is how you always convert into Kelvin. Jaquan, you're going to miss this and you're going to be in trouble for missing it. Jaquan! That sugar did not put you to That's why I always do it. All right. Now, I'm going to show you exactly how I want you working this problem. Are you ready with me? Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. This problem says at 120 degrees Celsius. Oh, stop right there. There's my T1. Do you see it? That's my T1, and Andrew says you better convert it. No. I'm going to add 273 to that. <laughs> Okay? So I wrote down 120 and I've got to add 273 to that. 273 has been cut off, so don't worry about his sig figs. I'm still going to record it to point one decimal place when I record that. Okay? What's 120 plus 273? 393.0. 393.0. I don't worry about the fact because that's just a cut off number anyway. And that's going to be a K, not degree K, just K. And then it says, at this temperature, the pressure of a sample of nitrogen gas is 1.07 atmospheres. Stop. There's a P1. Do you see it? Okay, so I'm going to write down P1, 1.07 ATM. The problem is, this says, what will the pressure be? They mentioned pressure again. And they've asked, what will it be? So it's my unknown. So P2 is my question, my unknown. You can call it X. You can put a question mark, whatever makes you feel comfortable. It says, what will the pressure be? And that's the second time we've heard pressure mentioned in the problem. That's why that's a P2 at 205 Celsius. That's the second time I've heard a temperature. That's a T2, so I write that down as 205 Celsius, and what do I do to it? 
right away, Andrew? Convert it. Convert it. Plus 273 gives me my Kelp. Is going to give me my Kelvin, 273. Let's make it look consistent, Ms. Matney, with the other one. You're just adding 273. And so 273 added to that is 478. 478K. Now, if you'll follow my yellow brick road, you can now cancel out all the units that are alike in what I call your data page. We just created a little data page from the word problem. I know most students don't like word problems. So you have to learn how to pull out of the word problem what you're given. And that's what we just did. I call that your data page. We're going to get rid of Kelvin because I see it twice. And what unit am I going to circle? ATM because that's the one that doesn't cancel out. That means that's going to be the unit I have to put with my final answer when I go and do a plug and chug into my combined gas one. Now, what's not mentioned here, or what am I told to tell constant? Volume. Okay, so if I were going to go over and use my version, I would just cross out the V's or just leave them out. If I were going to use some of my other students' versions, version, I would just do the same thing, cross out the V or just leave it out. Okay? How many people like this way? A little bit more than half of you versus this way? Okay. This is already that crisscross multiplied, so you can do it this way if you would prefer. Okay? Let me put over here a little bit of a race. Let me erase a little bit so I have clear space to do what I want to do. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug into P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. And why, again, am I leaving out the volume? Because it's constant. So I don't have to worry about them in the combined gas law. I don't have to worry about them in the combined gas law. Now I'm just going to plug in my numbers, and you don't have to put any units down, just numbers, because you've crossed out the units and you've circled the one you'll need at the very end. So I'm going to plug in 1.07. I'm going to divide that by my T1 of 393.0. I'm going to set that equal to my unknown P2 and put that over 478. Okay, how do I solve for P2? Cross multiplying, that's going to look like this, 1.07 times 478 divided by 393.0 and that's going to equal my P2. That's going to give me a final answer when I round it off to only three sig figs. Why three sig figs? Three, three, and four. So I go with three. I'm going to get 1.30. And what's my unit? ATM, because I circled it over there. ATM is my P2. And we're done with our one and only example we're going to do today.